what's unique about what we're happening, what's happening today in government, in the world, in America, is it's as if we're living in an Ayn Rand novel right now. If Ayn Rand were here today, I think she would do a great job in showing us just how wrong what government is doing is. Not the quantitative analysis, not the new numbers, but the morality of what is wrong with what government is doing today. Well, that was then, just a few years ago. In tonight's rewrite, episode three of Paul Ryan's relationship and lies about his relationship, that woman who is not his wife. In April, we showed you how Paul Ryan instantly turned against Ayn Rand when Catholics United issued a statement questioning, quote, why Ryan, as a self-professed Catholic, would put the teachings of ultra-capitalist Ayn Rand, of whom he has spoken glowingly, before the teachings of Jesus and the Church. That's when Paul Ryan, who had made reading Ayn Rand's books mandatory for his staff, that's when he started saying, quote, I reject her philosophy, it's an atheist philosophy. Here's how he put it to Brit Hume yesterday on Fox News. It's something I completely disagree with. It's an atheistic philosophy. Here's what he used to say about his hero. I grew up on Ayn Rand, that's what I tell people. I, uh, you know, everybody does their soul searching and, and trying to find out who they are and what they believe and you learn about yourself. Uh, I grew up reading Ayn Rand and it taught me quite a bit about who I am and what my value systems are and what my beliefs are. The reason I got involved in public service, um, by and large, if I had to credit one thinker, one person, it would be Ayn Rand. In 1967, when late night TV truly was great, the greatest of them all, Johnny Carson, dropped the jokes one night and introduced Ayn Rand to America. Johnny did his show in those days in studio in a studio just three floors above me, above where I'm sitting right now. It's where Jimmy Fallon does his show now. Welcome, please, Miss Ayn Rand. The basic principle of objectivism is that man must be guided exclusively by reason. Reason is the faculty that identifies and integrates the material provided by his senses. That's a formal definition. That reason is man's only tool of knowledge, his only guide to action, and his only guide to the choice of values. All of Rand's writings, all of her books, were very clear on this. Reason is the only guide to values. Religion should have no role in forming values in Ayn Rand's world. Paul Ryan now claims he had no idea he was following the teachings of an atheist and that her philosophy was purely atheistic. He is, of course, lying about that, but since you can't be a good Republican and an atheist, Ryan is now locked into that lie. Johnny Carson certainly understood what Ayn Rand was saying. A belief which you do not believe in, uh, I assume, I do not believe in the existence of a supreme being or God or creator or whatever. No, I do not. The discussion with Johnny went on for a half an hour, and Johnny's sidekick, Ed McMahon, a distinguished graduate of Catholic University, chimed in with this. In our culture, uh, it seems that uh, everything springs from fam the family relationship, the little tiny individual groups of husband, wife, child, or whatever. How does that grouping fit in with your philosophy? In other words, how do you share? Optionally. That? Yeah. Other, optionally. I don't think that uh, the family is the necessary uh, unit of society. So doctrinaire Republican Paul Ryan has shaped his thinking, has based his career on a Russian atheist writer who says she doesn't think the family is a necessary unit of society. Imagine, imagine if Barack Obama had been a devoted follower of a Russian atheist who insists that the family unit is unnecessary. Imagine what Mitt Romney would be saying about that foreign philosophy. Imagine what the Fox News players would be saying. Fox News will never, ever, ever let Fox News viewers see Paul Ryan's favorite philosopher saying what she just said. How disappointed would Ayn Rand be in her formerly devoted public disciple, Paul Ryan? Well, she wouldn't miss his devotion very much because his recent betrayal just wouldn't surprise her because Paul Ryan was never true to Rand's philosophy. Right-wing hero, 
Ayn Rand couldn't stand Ronald Reagan. She urged people not to vote for Ronald Reagan and insisted that Reagan clearly did not believe in freedom and respect for the rights of the individual because, among many other reasons, Reagan opposed the right to choose abortion. That's right. Paul Ryan, a Republican anti-abortion fanatic, has until very recently been publicly proclaiming his philosophical hero to be a woman who was a relentless champion of a woman's right to choose. And Ryan's pro-war stance in the Congress on every issue and every funding issue involving the Iraq war and the Afghanistan war would have disappointed Rand too. Here she is telling Johnny her opinion of the American war of choice at that time. But I am against the war of Viet in Vietnam because it is a useless and senseless war and it does not serve any national interest. Ayn Rand was a much clearer and much more consistent thinker than Paul Ryan could ever be. And she would have seen through Paul Ryan's phony devotion to her long before Catholics United and vice presidential politics made him turn on her. Ayn Rand was smart enough to know that Paul Ryan used her, used her to appeal to wacky conservatives who oppose every abortion and support every war and then delude themselves into thinking they are devoted followers of Ayn Rand. Citing Ayn Rand was the right wing's cheap way to sound intellectual, trying to sound like a thinking conservative. Ryan was using Rand to label himself that way. Paul Ryan couldn't have disappointed Ayn Rand because she would have always known he was just using her. And despite all those pretty words he said about her for years and years, she knew he never really loved her.